Okay, welcome to the next lesson. In this lesson, we are going to talk about finding elements in your scripts. So what do I mean by that? Now, no matter whether you are doing some editor scripting or some runtime scripting, you will always get into the situation where you have some elements that you maybe put together with UI Builder or you just are loading them from a script. However, you're doing that in the moment where you want to connect them to any kind of game logic or whatever you need in your editor windows, um, you will need references to those elements. And this could be finding a button and hooking up some functionality for the button, finding some text element and displaying some text or some uh, data. In all of those scenarios, you will need a way to find your elements and you also need some um, efficient and convenient ways to filter and query those elements. What if you want to find some children of some elements? What if you want to find elements that are um, only the elements that are buttons? What if you want to find elements that have some particular classes? You can do all of that in UI Toolkit and we are going to learn how to do that just right now. So why have I put those three boxes on this slide here? Now, um, one side note at the beginning, for those of you who haven't used those things here, now this queue has absolutely nothing to do with um, flat earth theories or stuff like that. I'm always a little bit, um, a little bit reluctant when I start uh, naming some scripts like, I don't know, YouTube video underscore Q. Um, no, this is just a short, um, a short version for query and there is nothing suspicious or um, conspiracy theory like here. Um, this is just how UI Toolkit named their um, stuff and we don't have any influence on that. So um, what are those three terms doing here? Now, um, w when you have done anything in UI Toolkit so far with scripting, you probably have touched at least this Q class already. Um, you did something like, um, I don't know, visual element, whatever is um, root.q and then you uh, gave it some type and you gave it some name and you found your element. Um, now, then you might reach some scenario where this, however, is not enough. So if you don't know anything else about this thing, and I don't know, you need uh, several elements, you need some more sophisticated filtering, um, Q might not be enough for you and you will have to search further. And then you might um, encounter the second thing here, which is the query class. And then when you read a little bit more in the documentation about the query class, you might encounter this query builder class. So a natural question um, would be, and it was definitely the question for me when I started using this. Um, now I want to do one thing basically, why are there three different classes for that? How do they differ? And do I really need all of them? So let's just answer those questions. Now, uh, the first step to bring some order into the chaos is to realize that there's actually some good news, which is that in real scripts, we basically only need two of those um, three. And those are the two um, on the top here, Q and Query. Now, technically, you could write everything you want in Query Builder, and you would not need Q and Query but then um, you would write a lot more code basically. So the way to, to understand that is to realize that under the hood, UI Toolkit actually uses Query Builder always basically. And um, the, two the, uh, the two classes Q and Query are basically just a shortcut to, to reach some functionality quicker without having to instantiate a new query builder all the time. That's basically happening under the hood. And all of the stuff that you could do with query builder, you can basically also do with the query class. And then the Q class is basically uh, one kind of layer of convenience um, on top, uh, which 
gives you only single elements, but you can get them very quickly and very uh, easily with writing a little bit less code because you don't have to type out um, query basically. But under the hood, um, the only thing that this uh, Q class does is it basically takes a first element of what the query class would give you. Um, so uh, you only have the possibility to get basically one element. So it's there for things like when you initialize your UI at the beginning and you want to get, I don't know, one button and set some functionality on your button, then you would use um, the Q class. If you need more complicated stuff, like getting several elements, filtering elements, stuff like that, you would use the query class. But under the hood, kind of technically, they use the query builder anyway. So if you really want to know everything, you could just use the query builder, at least for some tests. And that's what we are going to do very quickly. We are just going to see what the query builder is giving us, how we can use it. And then we are going to basically throw it away and understand that there is a quicker way to access it through the query class. Okay. For now, that was just a lot of talk. Um, now let's rather look at some real examples with some real scripts and real elements. And I'm sure this will quickly become a lot clearer. Now, before I actually show you what on what example we are going to work on in this um, in this lesson and what I've set up here in, in Unity, let's just have a quick look at the documentation for the query builder because basically those are the tools that are at our disposal for finding elements. So when you want to find out what can I do with um, my queries, what can I also do with my queue and my um, query class, the, the real answer will actually be here because the query class is actually giving you a query builder under the hood and so whatever you want to do with a query, you are actually doing it with a query builder. So again, if you want to find out what, what tools do I actually have, what can I actually use? This is the kind of documentation that you need, or you will also find that obviously in the, um, in your code environment, when you, um, when you start writing the code and then your autocomplete um, hints, depending on your code environment, will basically show you that those um, those methods here are available. Now, obviously, we are not going to um, study all of those uh, things and um, try them out one by one because this would last like 10 hours. Um, the only thing that I want you to take away here is that those things are basically in two categories. Now, when you look at those texts that you find here, um, you will find a lot of those methods starting with or the, the, the description of the methods starting with something like selects all this, selects all that, selects something. And then you will find others that end with a shortcut for doing something like that, or a shorthand for doing something like that, or a shorthand for doing something like that. So those methods basically fall in two categories. One category are selectors, or you could call them filters or whatever you want to call them. Um, those are ways how you can basically search for your elements. And for example, like this first thing here, it does what it says, it selects all elements that are active. So that would be a selector. Now, um, another one would be the class method where you can um, find elements by class names that you gave them. So the, the class names that you use for your USS files. Um, and also, I don't know, let's try a third one of type. This one selects elements by type. And now, um, so when you use those selectors, you are basically taking a result or a result set, you are accumulating elements. And then once you have some result set, those other methods are there for um, selecting elements out of those result sets. So for example, let's say you selected, I don't know, you use the of type selector and you get five labels, five elements that are actually labels. 
And now on those five labels, you could go um, add index and select, I don't know, the second one, for example. Or you could go with first and get the first one. Or you could do um, the for each um, the for each method and do something with each element. So we can see that we are basically having two kinds of methods here. So this is actually not as um, complex and not as big as it might seem at first glance because basically you can do two things you can select stuff and then you have a result set and then on this result set you can um, use those other convenience methods that allow you to quickly access uh, whatever element you need of those result sets you can also do the to list for example which gives you a list of all the uh, of all the um, elements that were selected um, before and what you can also do with the selectors and that's kind of the last thing that i want to mention is that you can chain them so you can um, for example get all active elements that are labels so you will do you will see how the syntax looks later but you would then basically use the active method and the of type method or you can combine them however you want to the important thing is once you did once you kind of used your two or three or just one selector and then you um you call the build um the build method it gives you a result set and on those result sets you can then um, continue to work